Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Technical Analysis Webinar here with Avatrade. My name is Troy. I'll be presenting as we're getting started. If you would, we're going to do a quick systems check. Just type OK in the chat box, in the question box, if you're hearing me clearly and seeing my screen all right. Just waiting on a few more responses to make sure everyone's up and running fine. Uh, if you would, type OK in the question box if you're hearing me clearly and seeing my screen all right. All right, looks like we're up and running fine. If anyone has any issues as we go along, please feel free to let me know. As always, keep in mind, there's risk involved with each and every trade that you take. No one trade is guaranteed to profit. Uh, the flip side of that is each and every trade you take does have a good potential for profits, but you want to go about things in a way that manages risk, uh, that makes sense for you in terms of trade size, exposure, etc. as you go after those potential profits. And keep in mind that what we go over is not meant to be financial advisement, but is coming from an educational perspective. Now, real quick, for those of you that are new to trading i know we have some experienced traders in the webinars as well uh, and we'll be on the live charts in just a moment to walk through some live strategies uh, but real quick what is technical analysis it's looking back at the charts basically uh, to see if the old price movements lend any predictability to future movements and uh, you know, past movements are no guarantee of future movements, but many times when you're doing your technical analysis on the charts, uh, you can find price levels that seem to repetitive, repetitively look important. Uh, you can see certain trending patterns and movements that, that tend to repeat themselves and maybe lend some predictability to future movements. And so uh, purely technical traders go off of those historical movements to help determine what their future trading will be. Uh, I say purely technical traders because some traders use a combination of technical analysis and fundamental analysis, uh, which involves uh, basically the news that's going on around the world to help you decide what direction you might want to trade. I tend to say it makes sense to do both at the same time. Now, we'll be fo focusing largely on technical analysis, but obviously we're not going to ignore what's going on fundamentally around the world either. Uh, there are different ways to go about technical analysis. You can do manual methods where you draw your own price levels and trending lines and such on the charts. And that tends to be what we do uh, in my webinars because that's the most educational way uh, to learn how to read the charts and understand what it is the indicators, which is the other way to do technical analysis, uh, to, to learn what the indicators are looking at. Uh, and, and Honestly, the indicators are looking at the same candlesticks that, that you can learn to read yourself. And, and actually, you can be smarter than the indicators because you can understand fundamentally which way you might prefer to, to, to trust uh, the price levels, whereas an indicator is kind of just blindly uh, looking at whether markets uh, over a certain time period look overbought or oversold. And, and many times the indicator is expecting reversals when it just doesn't happen. Uh, depending if it's a day like yesterday where, for example, gold just kept on dropping, breaking support level after support level, and the indicators were saying, hey, time to buy, time to buy, and it, and it kept dropping. Uh, and fundamentally, we understood why that was happening, and technically, uh, there are some strategies you can use uh, to take advantage of that type of fundamental situation. And so uh, we're going to get into some of these strategies here in a moment where we're combining the technical strategies along with your fundamental knowledge uh, to try and take advantage of the, the technical breakthroughs that, that can happen or the bounces uh, as well. If you have any questions, you want to give any input as we go along, please feel free to do so at any time in the question box. Right now, what we'll do is uh, we'll take a quick look on our web trader uh, at some strategies, some concepts, and, and also how the features in the web trader uh, can assist you with your technical analysis as well, since that's our focus today. Uh, the, the trading platform options are here, and, and I would say your two best options for trading on, on your MT4 and MT5 accounts would be actually to use our Avatrade Go mobile app and our WebTrader platform because they both have 
the advanced features that we're going to look at uh, within within the session today as we go through our technical analysis. So you can download the Arbitrade Go mobile app from here. It's in the major app stores. There are links to the app stores, or you can just keyword search in your app store uh, to find the Arbitrade Go app. And it has amazing features on it, same as what we're about to see when we log in uh, to the web trader from here. So if you log in from the upper right corner of our website, you'll be in the web trader, it looks like this, and you'll find that the Arbitrade Go mobile app has the same features and the same kind of look and feel to it. So, uh, you know, we, we were mentioning about gold and what happened yesterday. Uh, so I think that's a good place maybe to start is is to to look at a chart uh with gold and 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 see what's happening now we could get some assistance in that matter meaning if we click on the tab in the upper left here and we go to the trading central features which are advanced features that we provide uh for free on all of our live accounts you can take a look at something like market buzz that gives you fundamental news that could maybe go along with your technical trading and uh, I can go to commodities if I want to look at something like gold and see if, if gold pops up on the screen. And now the most trending in terms of fundamental news, crude oil and natural gas, we can understand why those might be trending a lot, right? Uh, crude oil has been moving huge lately, so has natural gas. Uh, both are largely tied uh, with, with uh, price fluctuations to the, the war between Russia and Ukraine, because there were a lot of fears about the supplies of both of those commodities coming out of Russia with the conflict that's been going on. Uh, so you can click on either one of these bubbles and you also could look for gold and, and others as well uh, within the smaller trending instruments, okay? And, and so if we want to look at say crude oil and see, well, what's the latest fundamental news, we can find it here. Okay, so you can get an idea of fundamentally what's happening. You can click on the articles that are popping up to get an idea of the fundamental news before you go into your technical analysis, right? Now, uh, if, if you want some advanced features that will help you with your technical analysis, which really that's what we're going to look a little closer at, you could go to the Trading Central features like Analyst Views. And we could take a look at a number of instruments and you might look at uh, GBP JPY. Now, uh, there's a reason why I'm pulling up GBP JPY. Uh, the expected movement on the signal is upward and they give you price targets. These green lines are price targets where you could program a take profit potentially. Why is are these price levels suggested as take profits if you're buying on GBP JPY? Well, look over here where these green lines come across that's an old support level right here. So support, 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 resistance, resistance, resistance. Once you break below this support, then if you ever come back up to it, that tends to act as resistance. Old support levels, now this would be resistance until it breaks back above. So they're saying this uptrend, if you're looking to, to take profits before needing to break through the next resistance level, the technical analysis is done for you here and this is where you might find resistance in this area. And that's why they're saying if you're buying on this, the take profit suggestions are these two green lines. Okay, so you see how the technical analysis has been done uh, to kind of tie into the trade move. And so it says the preference is, is the upside prevails on GBP JPY uh, as long as it's still above this support level. So the support level is this blue line here. So as long as this price level is not broken below, and this is still above it, then they say buy with price targets up here. Now, the, the flip side of that is if the signal goes bad and it breaks below this blue line, you may have your stop loss just below that support level because then the suggestion is to go the other direction. Okay, the alternate scenario is to sell if the price moves below 162.06 with then the take profit targets uh, are the red lines. These prices are suggested here for sell take profits, which are the next support levels down. Uh, type OK if you understand how those signals should be interpreted coming from Trading Central. Basically, it gives you two options. A market move in one direction as a preferred direction and a backup pending order move 
as an alter, alternate scenario in case the price reverses, in this case, below 162.06. You could have a pending order to sell below this level in case your market buy goes bad. Just type OK if you're with me on, on that concept here with the signals. All right, if anyone has questions on that, just let me know. So now, why did I pick the GBP JPY to, to look at the technical analysis on? And the answer would be if you're paying attention to the fundamental news, there's actually some relative excitement out of the UK uh, about uh, the political situation and the prime minister maybe uh, resigning uh, sometime in the, in, in the coming weeks uh, because of all of the pressure on him. And so uh, th that's, that situation uh, is actually being interpreted positively out of the UK. And, uh, and if Boris Johnson uh, kind of ends, ends his reign, uh, I guess that's being viewed as positive. I, I, I'm, I'm not understanding exactly all of the economic outlooks on that, but that's the way it's been running. And so this signal goes in line with the sentiment that's out there right now out of the UK. And, and in general, the volatility has been low today. So overall fear on the market has eased up. The headlines from this morning have, have, have said the stock futures are green and they have been. Uh, and so it makes sense that the yen might be weak because the yen tends to strengthen when there's fear and weaken when fear is letting up. So this combination makes sense. And you see everything's going up against the yen with the signals. So that's a trend in and of itself. And then the pound specifically has reason maybe to be bullish, okay? So you're trying to pick a signal that makes sense to you fundamentally as well, okay? So have an idea of the fundamentals and then do the technical analysis review on something that you might agree with in terms of the signal, all right? And there are other signals you could look at here. Uh, let's go ahead and, and, and do our own interpretation maybe on some charts, all right? And, uh, you know, there's been some large movements in, in some different instruments out there. Uh, we could look at something like gold, okay? It had such a huge move yesterday. And maybe there's a rebound move coming today. Since yesterday was filled with fear, and today it seems like the fear eased a bit, uh, maybe gold could have a rebound. No guarantee, right? But uh, if we're doing some technical analysis, let's see what's happening here. There's gold's plunge yesterday. And it was a rapid, rapid drop, not just yesterday, but over the over the past couple trading days, gold has really plunged, okay? And so now we can go to larger candles, see if we see a support level down there somewhere, one week candles. And I drew a support level a while back where I said I thought gold could, could drop to, okay? On the one week candles, it's down just below 1,700, we find support. So around 1,700. One week candles, support back up, support back up, support back up, support back up. When we say support, it's a price level that the market's having trouble breaking below and, and the price keeps bouncing back up off that level. So we see here, just below 1700, a relative area of support, okay? We're not there yet, by the way. We're, we're in this area and you, know, you might say there's another level of support right there we see right around 17 uh 18 it hit here on the one week candles and bounced and then it got near there another time but it's really not a confirmed price level of support other than at, at one point uh but here we've got multiple points of confirmation of support on the price just below 1700 so uh bigger picture looks like this could fall further okay towards 1700 smaller picture 15 minute candles look at the price rebound from uh where it was yesterday 1732 or so back up to 1743 so you could start to look at this and say okay i understand the fear is down a bit today gold is bounced back up you've got a new resistance that formed on the 15 minute candles right around 1750, okay, 1747. So 
it's testing the 1747, 1750 range, and then the next resistance would be up here around 1750, okay? So the bigger resistance, you can see this was support, support, and then a plunge, okay? It was a rapid drop. We see the fear is down a bit. We see this is trying to climb and still looks to be trying to, to push up. So uh, if you understand that today, the fear feels like it's kind of on pause. We see the volatility index is down a little bit. The strength of the US dollar is down a little bit. That could allow gold to bounce back up through this little bit of resistance that formed and challenge the larger resistance level, which is this old support level at 1750. But then you also saw there's a lot of room for gold to drop even down to below 1700 when we looked at the one week candles. So shorter picture, it looks like gold could try and climb back up to 1750, 1760, okay? 1759 is this price level here. Uh, bigger picture, if the US dollar continues to strengthen as interest rates are maybe increased more moving forward, uh, maybe gold does challenge to, to drop to that 1700 level or lower, okay? so. Uh, Short-term outlook seems like gold could bounce, fundamentally speaking. Uh, Longer-term outlook looks like gold has room to drop on those one-week candles, okay? So uh, the question is, then what do you do with gold if you're looking to trade on it? Uh, one thing I might do is put a pending order up here, okay? This looks like a, a resistance at 1759. Maybe I say at 1755, okay? If it gets up to 1755, or maybe you want to be a little closer to that resistance, 1758, if it gets up close to this resistance, maybe then you say, now I'll sell. Okay, waiting to see if gold will bounce back up a bit more. That's one option. Obviously not the only option, but if in the bigger picture you understand the fundamentals, US dollar has been really strong, seems to be on pause today, maybe that allows crude oil and gold to bounce back up. So you pick your price that you like if you're wanting to short gold, okay? And so perhaps you can snag a higher uh, price level if that's the case. And maybe you're wanting to buy on gold, so maybe now's a good time after all the dropping. So pending order to sell from a higher price in this simulation. So execute if price hits. Let's switch to sell in this example. Okay, we understand resistance level, sell from just before the resistance, put the stop loss just above the resistance maybe. So if the price hits, let's say in our case 1757, then we're selling in this example, uh, take profit maybe back at today's low, 1730 uh, or yesterday's low, 1733. And my stop loss, I don't have to risk much. If that's where I'm getting in, I can get just above that resistance here. And maybe I want to go above this whole resistance here, okay, to, to have a, a little buffer between my entry price and my stop loss. Would have to break above this resistance and above this one to hit my stop loss at 1768. So only risking about. Ten dollars per per ounce, approximately, and I could I could get in at seventeen fifty eight. That would still be before the resistance, right? So exactly ten dollars per ounce. I'm risking to the stop loss. Okay, seventeen fifty eight entry, seventeen sixty eight stop loss to be above two resistance levels, and then take profit seventeen thirty three. And you see. Even though my, my stop loss is quite a distance away, I have two resistance levels in my favor before it would hit my stop loss. I still have better than two to one, two and a half to one potential profit to risk. And I'm taking profit before it would even have to break yesterday's low in this simulation. Okay, so the risk management is done for you by our platform, by our app. Uh, in terms of calculating your potential profit and your potential loss uh, to your take profit and to your stop loss, okay? Now, 
I can adjust my trade size now that I have the technical analysis done with my preferred entry point, my stop loss, my take profit, and I can adjust my trade size to get the amount of exposure that I, I'm comfortable with. So let's say I'm willing to risk 250 on the move. Okay, then now I see my possible loss is 50, so I can go five times larger. So 0 0.25, then I see, okay, now I'm risking 250 to my stop loss and my potential profit is calculated for me as well. Now I can set that sell position order so that it's ready to, to trade if the price comes up to my target price to sell from, okay? That's based on fundamentals, bigger picture, that uh, seems the US dollar is uh, has reason to continue to strengthen eventually here. And uh, it's also the entry price is based on the fact that we understand fundamentally right now the fear is kind of dropped today. Seems to be a pause before maybe more fear about recession could kick back in eventually. All right, so uh, what then uh, could you do in the short term? You say, okay, fear seems to have died down. Would I wanna buy then on gold? If I think the US dollar will weaken today, could gold bounce back up? Maybe, that could be a move you'd be interested in. You also could do this, okay? If you, if you say, no, no, I think gold could drop, I just, I'm not sure if it'll drop yet. Uh, you can go to larger candles, let's go to one day candles, one week candles. And I could say, okay, if it drops below this support level I drew here, okay? If it drops below yesterday's low, then I'll sell again from the lower point. If it confirms a downtrend, meaning, if it drops below this low point that it hit yesterday, if it drops below this low point, then that confirms a further downtrend. So you actually could put a pending order down here, say at 1730, that if it breaks this support level, a pending order to sell from that point with a take profit down at 1700, which is that next support level that we saw in the one week candles. Okay? So. Uh, you could do then sell, not from a higher point like the one we prepared, but also from a lower point if it breaks the support level. Okay, so execute when price hits, 1730. Take profit, we saw the support levels at just below 1700, so you could say take profit just before that support at 1700. And stop loss, if it does enter at 1730, it means it broke this support. So you could put your, your stop loss back above that, maybe somewhere above this high, okay? You could say, I'll put my stop loss at 1750, okay? As an example. And still you have better possible profit to risk. Okay, could get above that round number at 1752, maybe 1753 to be above that round number. So it would have to break this resistance and hit 1752 to hit your stop loss up there. It would have to clear this resistance and be on its way up before you give up on this trade. And you still have a better possible profit than loss looking at the stop loss and take profit. Now, again, you say, okay, if I'm willing to risk X amount per trade, if I'm making up the number 250, let's say that's 1% of my balance or something, uh, you should know the amount you're willing to risk per trade. Then now I adjust the trade size to be equivalent to what makes sense. So let's say 0 0.11, I'm risking 242. 0 0.12, I'm risking 264. So maybe I go 0 0.11 to be just under that number, okay? Now I've got my risk management calculated and I sell. So two technical strategies on the same instrument. One, hoping to, to grab a better price before selling. If I believe in the bigger picture, gold will drop. The other saying, okay, I don't wanna miss it. If gold just plunges again, if fear starts to escalate again, I'm waiting for a technical breakthrough of this support level and I'll sell if it confirms a downtrend. 
two different strategies, both in the same direction in this case, uh, and they're both pending orders. So here you see my pending orders, then waiting, the trigger prices are listed, and they're ready to go, okay? Risk management calculated, everything uh, done, and the, and the platform here really helped us with our risk management as we're doing the technical analysis as well. Good question. Leonard, you're asking, how do you apply AVA Protect to a pending order? And the answer is you can't. AVA Protect can only be activated on a market move. So let's go to gold again. Okay, let's go over to gold. I'll bring up gold. And let's say you realize, okay, tomorrow's non-farm payroll announcement. The U.S. has its largest monthly announcement the first Friday of each week or of each month, and uh, that's tomorrow. The non-farm payroll numbers, it's job payroll numbers, hourly earnings numbers. Uh, it really can move the markets in a big way when those numbers come out. And since that's combined with all of this fear about recession and inflation and increased interest rates and high gas prices, I expect there could be huge movements tomorrow on something like gold between now and tomorrow, okay? So we could do a market move. We've got pending orders, right, in areas where you prefer to enter. And now you might say, okay, now let me use something like Ava Protect for a market move, okay? Meaning a, a move I'm gonna do right now. And so you might say, okay, in the short term, I expect that gold could uh, go up fear seems to be on pause right now but you might say by the time non-farm payrolls done boy i think the u.s dollar could re-strengthen and gold could could challenge that 1700 level where we saw in the one week candles down lower i i'm making that up right i'm not saying that's what you should think saying if you thought that but then you understand uh what if the non-farm payroll numbers do the opposite what if they eliminate fear and the US dollar weakens and, and gold goes flying back up in the other direction. You say, wow, so there's potential with that big news tomorrow for a huge movement in either direction. You say, okay, let me look at things right now. I, I, I currently put together some pending orders to sell, right? So maybe I do the opposite with an AVA protect move where just in case the news is the opposite of what everyone thinks it could be, and gold rebounds back up, there's a huge potential for a huge climb on gold as well. If I go to four hour candles, look how much, or even one day candles, look how much gold has dropped in the past days. It's at 1742, dropped from 2000 right here, not that long ago, just a few weeks back, right? So, so you say, okay, let me use Ava Protect, you know, to go after a huge potential climb back up in case the news is maybe really good news for some reason. And if it goes the wrong way, I'm protected against all losses during the protected time period. And also, by the way, if it goes flying the wrong way, my pending orders might pay out really big. So you see what I'm doing here. I'm hedging myself, but with Ava Protect to back up the opposite direction. Okay. So let's take that approach in this simulation and by the way this is a dummy account i know it says real account but it's a real dummy account so that all the features are active uh so let's say i want to protect past the announcement tomorrow so i'm going to protect for two days which takes me through the weekend all the way to the 11th of july you see expires on the 11th of july 1700 hours okay so now i can get through the announcement and if my target take profit, let's say, is up here at 1,900, let's say I'm hoping there's uh, big news that that goes uh, the opposite direction that many are expecting, and 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 this goes rushing back up towards this resistance at 1,900, and I'll say I'll take profit at 1,874 just before this resistance level here, okay? 1,874, 1,870 somewhere before this resistance. So uh, let's then say take profit, 
70. Just in case gold just goes flying back up this direction towards this resistance. I'll take a shot at it, right? Stop loss. I don't need it until the, the protection ends. So I just have to keep an eye of when the protection expires. And if I haven't taken profit yet or closed it, uh, then maybe I add a stop loss before the protection ends, okay? Now uh, I have to adjust my trade size, right? I, I'm willing to risk I had said uh, I had made up a number, right? 250 per trade. Whatever that number is for you, now I can adjust the trade size to have the cost of the protection equal what I'm willing to risk per trade. So now I can go up to, let's say, 0 0.2 as a trade size. The protection costs me 236. Uh, 0 0.22, 0 0.21, that puts me almost at 250. $248 for the protection for uh, all the way until the 11th through the weekend. Okay. I could make $2,684 if it goes to my target price. Doesn't even have to break this resistance level to hit my target price. So you see risk reward, it's like 10 times possible profit compared to the risk. The risk is the payment of Ava Protect because after that, I don't have any risk until the protection ends. I have all the way until the 11th, in fact. Not only through the NFP announcement to potentially swing gold back up, but through the weekend, Anything can happen through the weekend. And then who knows where the market opens on, on the 11th. And then I have until 5 p.m. on the 11th to close my trade. Okay? So uh, you're just looking for possible movement technically uh, with this type of move. Okay? So I'm all set up. I have a protect. I'm willing to invest 248 in the protection in order to go after a possible profit of 2661 if you're right on a move like this, one out of 10 times, you still make a small profit. One out of 10, you still make a small profit. Okay, you see the power of this protection. So now I'm gonna go ahead and buy, okay? That's a market move. And so that's how you use Ava Protect. You go after big potential, right? With limited risk. I'm protected now all the way till the 11th. What a great tool to be able to use if it fits into your strategy, okay? And now if it goes dead the wrong way, any loss during the protected time period all the way to the 11th, I get paid back. And guess what? My pending orders will probably be winning. So I could easily make back the, the cost of the uh, protection and then some on, on the, the move, my pending orders that will kick in if there's confirmation of, of movement down or if it rises to the that resistance level we were looking at. So. Uh, it can be really cool to, to do combinations of strategies using the different tools on the web trader uh, and on our, our Avago mobile app to, to do multiple strategies on the same instrument even. And, and it can really maybe improve upon your chances of overall success. I don't need to win on all of these trades to profit. In, in the end, it's not about being right. If it was, I wouldn't be trading in both directions potentially here, right? So I, I'm not trying to be right. I'm trying to be smart. And many times that's what creates profit, profitable traders in the end is trading smart, not trying to guess and be right on the direction. Okay. Any questions before we end things uh, on this session? I think this is a good place maybe to stop. Okay, great. I don't see any other questions popping up. Uh, I would... I uh, encourage you to go ahead and take a look at the major indices as well. Uh, there's been a lot of movement on indices. Uh, just real quick before we end things, I'll show you, for example, uh, if we look at the S&P 500, you might deem this an opportunity because if we look at, say, two-hour candles, look how much the S&P 500 has climbed since hitting a low uh, over this week, over the past few days, we see support level back up, support level back up, support level back up. We also see a resistance level here, which was an old support level. So we see resistance, resistance, resistance. And we see that resistance is starting to, to be found as it gets close to here, it pushed back down, got close, pushed back down. So this resistance could work in your favor if the fear hits the markets again, 
look at the drop you could have before it finds support way down here. So something like the S&P 500, you could look at other indices around the world. Uh, I think this climb with today's lull and fear could offer an opportunistic entry point if you're looking to short the market and trust the resistance levels up here with all of the recession fears that could kick back in. Okay, just an idea to look at the major indices as well. Uh, all right, everybody, thank you for joining. I appreciate your participation and attendance and, and also the questions. They're helpful uh, for expanding on information that, that others might be thinking about as well. So thank you for the input and the questions. Uh, until next time, good luck with your trading. Bye for now.